and another day has arrived. I do my usual morning routine, wake up, breakfast, morning release, and then wait for Akito. It's the same thing every day, although something about today feels a bit off. I have a bad feeling about today. Hey, what's up? I'll be there in five minutes, so if you're ready, you can just wait for me outside. Alright, see you in five. Yep. And here I thought it was earlier than that. Huh. Alright, time to pay a visit to Ezra Longley. I lock up my apartment and go downstairs. By the time I get down, I see that Akito's already waiting for me in his car. Hey, Kazuki! Hi. Well, don't you sound enthusiastic. Sorry, it's just... We're practically doing the same thing every single day, and our investigations are going so slow that it's killing me. I just want to catch this guy already. Oh, stop being so pessimistic. I happen to think we're making great progress on the case so far. Are we really? Akira looks a bit stunned by my question. I believe is making more progress on the case than we are at this point. Oh, I get it. You're upset that he's solved more cases than we have, aren't you? It's not that. I don't know how to explain it, it's just... Yeah? I have a bad feeling. A bad feeling about who? The Phantom or General Koya? The Phantom, of course. Right. Just checking. Don't get me wrong, Koya is doing a good job and all, but... The Phantom and his methods are too unpredictable. What if... I look at Akido. He doesn't say anything. He just returns my serious gaze with one of his own. We know him. Shock flashes over Akito's face the moment those words come out of my mouth. To be honest, it surprised me too. The thought hadn't really crossed my mind until now. You know, Kazuki, when I first met you, I thought, who the heck is this weirdo? Thanks for being so straightforward about it. And what does this have to do with Phantom? You were just so... strange. You rarely talked to anyone and mostly kept to yourself. I remember thinking what your problem was, but then I heard about your parents. There were a lot of speculations about their death back then, whether it was just an accident or some sort of murder conspiracy. I continue to stare at Akito in silence while taking in every word. That's when I realized that you're the way you are because of your past. It's what shaped you to be the person you are now. It's the reason why you've become a detective. Well, he's right about that. Which brings me to this point. The Phantom is indeed unpredictable. However, there has to be some kind of reason or motivation as to why he's doing this, and for what purpose. We just need to find out what it is, and when we do, we'll be able to truly understand who the Phantom really is. Not only as a killer, but as a person. Hmm, that was really well said. You make it sound easier than it really is, though. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a great motivational speaker, and a fearless detective at that. How the heck are you a fearless detective? Hey, I earned it! After our little break in stunt at Ezra's apartment, I totally deserve that title. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Congrats! Anyway, we should get going. Oh, right. Time for us to meet Ezra. Yeah, let's go. I hope I'm right. And I hope we get to meet Ezra this time. I wonder if the police have already spoken with him. Let me do the talking, okay? Huh? Why? You don't trust me? It's not that. Just do me a favor and don't say anything stupid like, We know that you did it. Got it? Yeah, I got it. Good. Hmm? Why isn't he answering the door? I swear I heard something earlier. Maybe it's my imagination. Let me give it another try. I look at Akito. Did you hear that? Yeah, someone's definitely inside. I was about to knock on the door a third time when the door suddenly flies open and we find ourselves face to face with a young man. He seems to be around our age. Yes? Hi, I'm Kazuki Koyama. This is my partner Akito Ishikawa. We're detectives from Igrasil. He shudders slightly. Oh, uh, how can I help you? Are you Mr. Ezra Longley? Yes? We would like to ask you a few questions about Hyun Ho Ogune. I study his expression. He looks a little pale and he seems really uncomfortable. Do you know her by any chance? Yes, I did, but I've already told the police everything. We were just friends. I never met up with her that day. I have no idea who'd want to kill her or why. It's the truth, I swear. He practically screamed in our faces. Liar. I catch sight of some baggages sitting on the floor behind him. Is he planning to flee somewhere? Hey, hey, relax, man. No one here is accusing you of anything. We just want to ask you some questions, that's all. It's normal procedure stuff. I I'm sorry, I'm just feeling overwhelmed by this whole situation. 
Are you going somewhere? Pardon? I see that you're all packed. Oh, that? I got some vacation time, so I figured I'd go on a trip or something, you know? Just to relax and unwind from all the stress? Oh, a vacation, huh? Yeah, everyone needs to relax once in a while, right? <laughs> Jeez, Akito. We just have a few questions we'd like to ask you. It won't take long, I promise. I'm sorry, but I'm really in a hurry to get somewhere. Can we continue with this after I return from my trip? Besides, like I said, I've already told the police everything I know. Now please excuse me, I have to go. He shuts the door without waiting for a reply. Well, that didn't go well. I give Akito an annoyed look. You think? Hey, don't get mad at me. It's not my fault, okay? Yeah, I know. The guy was obviously lying through his teeth. Definitely. Did you notice how pale he got when you mentioned Ogane? Yeah, anyway, let's go. We head back to Akito's car. We buckle up and get ready to go. But instead of driving, Akito turns to look at me with a wide grin on his face. Oh no, this can't be good. So what's the plan now, partner? I knew I should have introduced you as my partner back there. <laughs> it sounded so awesome coming from you. And I know you like calling me your partner. Uh, since plan A completely backfired on us, we'll go ahead and proceed to plan B for now. But we don't have a plan B. Crap. I knew we should have brought thought of a backup plan before we went in there. Maybe we should go talk to the police. Let's wait. Wait. You mean we're just going to wait here? Yes. For what, exactly? For Ezra. Wait, what? Why bother? He clearly doesn't want to talk to us right now. I want to see what he's planning to do. He just told us that he's going on vacation, remember? Yes, but he's probably using that as an excuse to get rid of the evidence. Ooh, nice catch, partner. High five. I give Akito another agitated look. Not in a thousand years. Oh, come on! I close my eyes and lean back in the seat. Just let me know if anything happens. Sheesh. Why do I always have to be the one on lookout? Because I said so. And besides, don't you want to help your partner out? <laughs> I smile. By the way, Kazuki. Yeah? I've been thinking about what you said yesterday. About what? About Professor Li Zhang. Oh. You mean the part about us asking around to see if anyone knows what Professor Shang was working on, and trying to find, trying to find what was stored on his hard drive? Yeah, I know that was only an excuse, and your real intention was to talk to Ezra, but I think it might be a great idea. After all, someone's got to know what Professor Zhang was working on before he got murdered. We could even solve the case. Kill two birds with one stone. You may be right. I was so focused on Ezra that I almost forgot about that. We should definitely check it out later. And maybe this time we'll have better luck. Who knows? I sure hope so. What's the connection between Ezra, the Phantom Ogune, and all the other victims here? I can't quite picture Ezra as the Phantom. He just doesn't fit my perception of the Phantom as all, at all. Something seems off. I can't see him pulling off those murders either, especially with his physique and personality. No, he can't be the killer. He's definitely not the Phantom. So then, how does he fit into all this? Did the Phantom frame him? Or did he help the Phantom? Uh, there are too many questions. I don't know how much time has passed by the time I... I don't know how much time has passed by since I got immersed in my thoughts. I think there's supposed to be a comma there. But before I knew it, Akito's already poking me in the arm and trying to get my attention. Hey, wake up. I'm not sleeping, just thinking. Whatever, look. I open my eyes and look in the direction where Akito's pointing. It's Ezra, and he's carrying a medium-sized box. A long, wide tube wrapped in foil is sticking out of it. What is that he's carrying? What's that? That looks like... Car. The carpet! He is trying to get rid of the evidence! Now's our chance to stop him. Let's go. Roger that. I'm turning the handle, but the door doesn't budge. Someone or something was preventing me from exiting. What the hell? I look out the car window, ready to give the culprit a piece of my mind. Damn it, who is it? Huh? What's the matter? What? But how? What the hell is he doing here? What are you doing here? 
I could ask you the same question. Oh, crap. I quickly glance over at Ezra. There's no doubt about it. Koya is here to interfere with our plans. Damn it. I got tired of sitting behind the desk. He smiles at me, which makes me even more angry. But how did you know that we'd be here? I didn't. It's just a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Anyway, take my advice, Gil. Stay out of this. He turns without another word to me and starts heading over to Ezra. How the heck did he find out? Beats me. We watch Koya walk straight up to Ezra. I quickly get out of the car to listen to their talk. Hello, Mr. Longley. General Koya? W what are you doing here? No, I was just passing by. Should I give you a hand with that? It looks heavy. What is it, a carpet? Yes, I mean, no, I mean, it is a carpet, but I don't need any help. I got this. Oh? Koya remains where he is and leans up against the wall. It didn't look as if he was going somewhere. You know what? Once I thought, I'll just take it back. I forgot to check with my mom to see if she wants it or not. She might be furious with me if I just throw it away like that. It was a stupid move. He starts picking up the carpet and ends up tearing the foil in the process. Uh. Ooh, that is one nasty stain. It's no wonder you wanted to throw it away. Are you sure you want to give that stained carpet to your mom? It's nothing. I just need to wash it. Koya doesn't budge. He seems to be pretty amused by Ezra's, pre Ezra's predicament. How can he be so calm? Hmm. Looks like you already tried that. I guess it didn't work, huh? Use peroxide. I... I... Well, it's not like it's your fault. After all, bloodstains are hard to get rid of. Only for amateurs. Ezra's eyes widen in bewilderment. He is clearly terrified of Koya. He opens his mouth to say something, but no words come out. Instead, he just stays rooted in spot, with a look of terror on his face and his mouth wide open. Kazuki, I know you're not a fan of his, but I've got to be honest here. I really admire General Koya. I don't respond. I don't know what to say to that anyway. Ezra backs up and bumps into a box that he had placed near the garbage bin. Spilling some of its contents, a phone, and some photos. He freezes and stares at Koya like a frightened doe-eyed deer caught in the headlights. Koya says nothing and simply kneels down to pick up one of the photos. This is a nice picture. Oh, my apologies. I hope you don't mind me looking at these. He looks at Ezra straight in the eyes. I'm guessing the young lady is Hyun Ho. I swear. Huh? I, I, didn't, I didn't do it. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Koya took out the handcuffs. You know what happens next, don't you? That was the tipping point. Ezra breaks down and throws the carpet at Koya while screaming. It wasn't me! And then he turns around and flees. Koya simply pushes the carpet aside as if it were just a feather. Why do they always try to run? Koya reaches into his side pocket and pulls out a small object. What's that? What's he doing? I have no idea. The object appears to be some kind of metal sphere. Don't tell me he's going to... Wh what? Koya throws the sphere at Ezra. It hits Ezra right in the head, causing him to lose his balance and fall to the ground. Throw it. We exchange looks of disbelief with each other. You've gotta be kidding me! He's crazy. You bet he is. By the time we turn our attention back to Koya, he's already standing over Ezra and handcuffing him. After reciting him his rights, Koya picks him up off the ground and heads back towards us. Ugh, I really hate it when they try to run. Um, yeah, I totally know what you mean. Jeez, why is he complaining? He didn't even break a sweat. Do you need help with the carpet? Oh, if it's not too much trouble, could you bring it to my car for me? I need to secure our little friend here in the back seat. I glance at Ezra. He's still in a state of shock. Sure, leave it to us. I appreciate it. A few minutes later, we finish placing all the evidence in the trunk of Koya's car. The carpet and the box that contains the phone, which probably belongs to Ogune, and the photos. Phew, alright, that's everything. Yeah. I take a quick peek at the photos. That's Ogune? She looks completely different with a long white dress and bandage over her eyes. Why do I have this feeling that I know her from somewhere? Hey, Kazuki? Hmm? Are you okay? Yeah. Thanks for your help. It's no problem. It's the least we can do for you. 
Yes, well, you're welcome to come with me to the police station for the interrogation. What? We can? Really? I don't see any reason why you two can't. Besides, it'll save you guys some time, as you'll get to hear all the details firsthand. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. What do you think, Kazuki? You're a tough guy to read, Koya. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Alright, so I'll see you two at the police station, then. He turns to leave, but suddenly stops in his tracks. Oh, I almost forgot. I would really appreciate it if you two could return Ezra Longley's file to me. He smiles at me, sending chills up my spine. He knew. Um, sure. We're sorry about that. You see, we took the file by mistake. We were actually planning to return it to you today. Koya looks at Akito and says nothing. I guess you knew about Ezra from the start. Uh, no, not really. You told us back then that you didn't find out anything. How would you explain this file, then? Well, technically, you were the first ones to see that file. If I didn't know it any better, I'd say you're trying to get ahead of us. Koya gives me a hard stare and says, And you're not? You're one mysterious fellow, General Koya. I really don't understand you at all. Oh. I hope that was a compliment. He smiles at me again. It's no wonder he gets along with Akido. Koya puts out his hand in the gesture of a handshake. So, I'll see you two at the police station? I shake his hand. Yeah. Hey, Kazuki. Yeah? Do you think General Koya knows that we took the file? Well, that's what I initially thought, but I'm probably overanalyzing the whole thing. It wouldn't make sense for him to do that. He probably just knows some files are missing and assumed the rest. Yeah, you're probably right. I hope so. Anyway, maybe we should hand the files over to the new guy and have him deliver to Koya for us. You mean Jasper? Yeah, him. Uh, I guess we could. I don't know. Don't worry. I don't think we'll bump into Michigo this time. I know, but can't we just do it ourselves? Or just ask Jamber Jasper to hand it to Michiko instead. I really don't feel like wandering around the police station right now. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Yep, I can't wait. Me too, to be honest. Although... Hmm? Never mind, it's nothing. Akito gives me a knowing look. Let me take a wild guess. You don't think he's a phantom either? Yeah, he doesn't fit the profile of the phantom at all. Besides... He doesn't act like the phantom. I totally agree with you, man. Hard not to notice that after the fiasco earlier. Yeah, honestly, he's too stupid to be the Phantom. What kind of an idiot would take the evidence from the crime scene back to his own home and attempt to throw it away in a garbage disposal right outside his apartment? That's just plain ridiculous. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, man. Hey, Jasper. Oh, you know, perfect timing. I heard that General Koya just stopped, uh... Guy suspected of murdering Ogune. Yeah, we know. Jasper doesn't say anything in return. He just gives me another one of his disapproving looks instead. Yeah, it's why we're here. I see. News sure travels fast around here. And he just got here a few minutes ago, too. Um, yeah. We were there when it happened, actually. What? You were there when General Koya made the arrest? Uh, I wouldn't exactly call it that, but yeah. Wow, seriously? That's so awesome! <laughs> Enough chit-chat, Akito. We should get going. Right, right. Oh, you wouldn't happen to know where Michiko is right now, would you? I think she's with General Koya. Oh, okay. Thank you. Why do you ask? It's none of your concern. I wasn't talking to you. Well, I'm answering you regardless. Let's go, Akito. I go on ahead not wanting to waste any more time. Jeez, guys, ease up. Anywho, thanks, Jasper. Hey, wait for me, Kazuki! You didn't have to be so rude, you know. He's always giving me those suspicious glances. It's really starting to grate on my nerves. You mean to tell me you were edgy with him over a couple glances? Jeez, it's no wonder you have so few friends. I simply shrug. So, which way to the interrogation room? <sighs> Why do I even bother? Whatever I say just falls on deaf ears with you. It's this way. I gladly let Akito lead the way. The faster we get there, the better. It should be somewhere around here. Yes, right here. I wonder if the interrogation has already begun. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Akito knocks before opening the door and peeking in. Koya is seated at the table. 
Looks like he's going over some paperwork with Michiko. Yes, we'll need to check this out. Understood. I'll have it checked out right away. Alright. Um, hey, I hope we're not interrupting your work. Hello? Oh, hey! No, you're not interrupting anything. Please, come in and have a seat. Thank you. Michiko smiles the second minute she sees us. Hello. We were just going over some notes to see what needs to be verified. Oh, I see. So you haven't spoken to Ezra yet? Not yet. Koya pauses to glance at Ezra, who's sitting in a room opposite the one-way mirror. He's still in... shock. I'm giving him some time to calm down first. Hmm. But what if he uses this time to fabricate a story for his behavior or something? <laughs> nah. General Koya leans back in his chair and clasps his hands together. Considering the amount of evidence we have against him, we wouldn't do him any good to lie to us now. We just need to run some lab tests on a bloodstain and have the phone's content checked out. Precisely. So he doesn't have much of a choice, but to tell us what really happened. Exactly. And to be honest, I would love to know what really happened back there. We all do. I knew it. I was right all along. Huh? Wh what? Did I say something wrong? What do you mean? I look at Koya. General Koya doesn't believe that Ezra is the Phantom either. What? Well... Isn't that right, General Koya? He simply smiles at me. I see that you're not shocked by this. Are you serious? That's awesome! How did you know that, Kazuki? I just realized it now, actually. If Ezra was really the Phantom, there's no way General Koya would be so calm about it. Jeez, Kazuki. Nothing gets by you, huh? <laughs> Ezra is too skittish to be the Phantom. Plus, nothing was planned. Everything is just one big mess. Exactly. It's too bad you figured it out, Kazuki. I was hoping to surprise you guys with my deductions. Seriously, how old is this guy? Oh, by the way, here is Ezra's file. We're really sorry about taking it. Michiko glances at Akito before exchanging looks with Koya. Then she looks back at us and smiles. Interesting. So, is there anything else we should be aware of? I think that's everything. What about Ezra? Is it true that he's already spoken to the police? Yes, it's true. What did he say? Um, he claimed he and Ogune were friends, and that's been years since they last saw each other. The strange thing is, when we try to verify this with Ogune's husband, he claimed he has never met Ezra. He has no idea who Ezra is at all. Years since they last saw each other? That's not what the phone bill shows us. His testimony doesn't correlate with the evidence at all. Exactly. Unfortunately, we don't have a search warrant to search his home. And since we have no way of verifying whether he was telling the truth or not, we decided to wait for him to act first. Oh, that's why you were there. You've been keeping him under tabs. Yeah. That's strange. What is? Shouldn't Ogune's husband know who Ezra is? I mean, they were close friends, right? They should know each other pretty well. Hmm, good point. Not to mention, there are so many photos of them together. It'd be hard to miss that, right? Exactly. You and I think quite alike, Kazuki. I guess we're not that different from each other. I guess so. Anyhow, we'll get to the bottom of this enigma soon. The police are working really hard on this case. Of course you will. You have the manpower and the resources to help you out with your investigative work. Unlike us. Don't get me wrong, though, I'm not saying that I've achieved things just by ordering people around. It's not that easy. <laughs> Stop reading my thoughts. Am I really that easy to read? Yes, teamwork is important. But teamwork cannot exist without a leader. In order for people to work effectively as a group, someone must be there to guide them. That's where a leader comes in. The leader must show the others the correct path. Otherwise, everyone will just get lost. They'll just be wandering around in the darkness. Whatever. Yeah, well, it's obvious you're doing your best. We give each other cold looks. Are they always like this? Unfortunately, yes. That's creepy. I know, right? You may be one step ahead of me now, Koya, but not for long. Alright, I think it's time to ask Ezra some questions. Hmm. 
I want to say this will probably give you points with Akido if you stay with him. We'll give him some alone time with Michigo. Mind if I come along? Uh, Kazuki. Hmm. He studies me for a bit. He probably won't let me. It doesn't hurt to ask, right? What do you think, Michiko? Huh? Me? Um, I don't know if... Yeah, you're right. He stops at the door and, without looking at me, says... Let's go in, kid. Huh? I don't blame Akito for reacting as he did. I'm a bit shocked myself. Yes. Michiko, I'll leave it up to you to jot down all the important information for us. Uh, yes, of course. That's why I'm here. And Kazuki... Yes. People will tell you anything when they're desperate. Just remember that all we care about is the truth. He opens the door and heads inside. What is that supposed to mean? I follow Koya into the interrogation room. Ezra stares at us from across the table as we enter. Hello, Mr. Longley. I believe no introduction is needed. You already know who I am, and I believe you also know this young man here. I examine the one-way mirror behind Ezra. Wow, you really can't see anything. I'm innocent. Relax. We just want to have a word with you. Hopefully we'll be able to clarify some things. You have to believe me. It was this guy called the Phantom. He set me up. The Phantom set him up. That's highly unlikely. The Phantom would never do anything like that. Yeah, sure. The Phantom planned all this. You had no clue whatsoever. Ogane's phone just happened to mysteriously show up in your apartment one day. That's right. Okay, now I understand what Koyu was saying earlier. People tell you anything when they're desperate. Don't forget about the carpet. Oh yeah, the magic carpet. Maybe Aladdin landed in your apartment. No. Koyu sits down in the seat across from Ezra and glares at him. I stay where I am and lean up against the wall. What will you do now, Koya? Don't give me that crap! So I guess he's going to try to scare him, huh? Let's start from the beginning, shall we? You see, my friend and I don't understand one thing. Why doesn't Ogane's husband know you? I mean, you said you and Ogane were close, right? Ezra looks absolutely terrified now. I don't know, maybe she never told her husband about me. Tell you the truth, we didn't see each other for years. Uh, I forgot to mention this, but for every lie you tell me, I will add extra time to your prison sentence. In other words, lie to me three times and it'll be the end of our little talk. You've just used up your first. I guess nothing gets by Koya, huh? Things are starting to get serious. I smile to myself. We were, you know... Yeah, lovers, I know. I just wanted you to tell me the truth. I figured this was the case. Do you know if Ogane was seeing someone else? No. Koya eyes him suspiciously. It's the truth. I really don't know. I know. I believe you. So, for how long did you and Ogane see each other? Um, about a year. A year. Suddenly, the images of my parents' death and the photo of Takashi Harada and Matsuo Ganichi flashes through my mind. Why the hell did I suddenly think of those things? They have nothing to do with this. Alright. And how would you describe your relationship? What? Your relationship with Hyonho Ogane. I loved her. I truly did. I know it's not right for me to say this, especially when she's married to someone else, but it's the truth. Hmm. Alright. Where are you going with this, Koya? On the day that Ogane was murdered, did you two meet? Yes, she asked to meet me. The time? Around 10pm, I think. I don't really remember. Hmm. And what happened next? She went home. Really? Come on, we both know there's more. She called me around midnight. Right. The housekeeper at the Rose Road Resort said that she saw Okune talking to him on the phone that night. She must have been talking to him. She was yelling at me because she thought I told someone about us, but I never did. I don't understand why she would think that. I glance at Koya. I can tell he's thinking the same thing I am. Ezra's telling the truth. Did she say anything else? She told me that some guy threatened her. The guy apparently gave her an ultimatum. If she didn't meet him at the resort, he would tell her husband about her affair. So the Phantom knew about their relationship. Interesting. I told her to wait for me, but she wouldn't listen. 
She said she wanted to end her relationship now and that she'll take care of the matter herself. She made a bad decision there. Still, that doesn't quite explain everything. Did you go to the resort? Yeah, but I'd been drinking that night, so I had to take a cab there. Smart move, considering all the other dumb moves he's made so far. But the resort was closed by the time I got there, so I didn't get to see Ogune. What? They weren't closed? Ugh, another lie. We were doing so well, too. Ezra is shaking in his seat now. How did the evidence end up in your apartment? I'm sure the blood on the carpet belongs to Ogune. No, it's my blood. Huh? You want me to believe that the blood on the carpet belongs to you? It's the truth. What about Ogune's phone? He must have dropped it at my place while I was out. How does he know that the Phantom is a guy? Well, that's your third lie. So I guess I'm done with you, kid. Have a nice time in prison. Koya rises from his chair. No, please, I'm telling you the truth. I didn't kill her. Yeah, whatever you say. Maybe you'll have more luck convincing my friend here. I, for one, think you deserve a life in prison. Wait, what? Me? What is he thinking? I look at Ezreal trying to conceal my shock. Ezreal's eyes widen in fear as he stares back at me. I'm out, Kazuki. Do whatever you want with him. I don't care anymore. Go ahead and rot in prison, Longley. Kulia turns his back to Ezra and winks at me. I wasn't expecting that. Are you teasing me, Kulia? I watch Kulia leave the room. Please? He looks to me for help. You're in serious shit here, buddy. You want my help? Then you gotta start giving me some answers. Ezra lowers his gaze. Let's continue from where you left off. You said that Rosewood Resort was closed by the time you got there, but from what I know, they were open at the time. Um, keep in mind that your life is in our hands, Ezra. Whatever happens to you from this point on is determined by what you choose to tell us right now. I was there. You were in the room. What's the point? You won't believe anything I say anyway. He's afraid to tell the truth for some reason. I guess Koya sensed this too. Okay, let me try a different strategy. My friend believes you killed Ogune. I didn't kill her. He starts shaking again. But I'm still here, so you have a chance to prove your innocence. You can tell me the truth, Ezra. Why don't you give it a try, hmm? He looks at me. It's clear that he's still scared out of his wits. But after a while, he says, I went into the room. It was dark. I saw a glimmer of light in the living room. Damn, it works. When I, when I got closer, I saw Ukune sitting in a chair. Her hands were strapped to the arms of the chair and her mouth was gagged. She was crying. I rushed over to help her, but... He starts to sob. Someone snuck up behind me and hit me over the head with a hard object. Next thing I know, I'm on the ground, groaning in pain. So that's how his blood got on the carpet. I guess he was telling the truth then. It really is his blood. You mentioned there was a guy earlier. Did you see the perpetrator's face? No, I just caught a glimpse of him. He had a black hood on, so I couldn't really see his face. But I'm positive it was a guy. I figured that was the case. So what happened next? When I woke up, I saw a huge stain of blood on the carpet and freaked out. Then I realized it was my blood from when I got attacked. I got up and saw Ukene still sitting in the chair. Only this time, she was wearing a white dress with bandages wrapped around her eyes. And her hands were on a sword. Nothing new there. I called her name, but she didn't respond. It was only when I got closer that I realized she was dead. I say nothing and wait for Ezra to continue. What was I supposed to do? My blood was all over the carpet, and I was the last person she spoke to on the phone. So I did the only thing I could think of. I took the carpet and her phone, and I ran. Which way? Huh? Which way did you go? The back or the front? I ran to the back of the resort. There was a ramp near the garbage container, so I leapt down onto it, and then I climbed over the gate. I know that's possible because I tested it myself back at the resort. I thought about throwing away the carpet back then, but I was afraid to. My blood is on it, after all. So I just took both the carpet and phone home. That's it. I swear I didn't kill her. I knew early on that he wasn't the Phantom. Still, why does he have a solid alibi to back himself up? Is he still hiding something? He was Ogune's lover, right? Maybe they got into an argument and he killed her by accident. 
And then he made it look like the Phantom did it. Is that even possible? Maybe I'm overanalyzing this. I give him a stern look. You believe me, don't you? What I think is not important. The problem is, you don't have any alibis. All we have right now is the story of yours. You were there, you saw Ugane strapped to a chair, and some guy knocked you up before you'd rescue her. That's it. In short, you don't know anything. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Ezra lowers his head, looking utterly defeated. I know. This is such a pain in the ass. You rode a cab to the resort, right? Ezra makes eye contact with me again. Yes, why? Do you have the taxi driver's business card with you? Yes, I do. It's in my wallet. All right. We will see if the driver remembers you, and if you recall seeing you with any items at the time. Did you bring anything with you when you took the cab? Did you bring anything with you when you rode the cab? No, I didn't. Why? Good. Then we can prove that you couldn't have done it. Ogune was dressed in a white dress, blindfolded, and her hands were on a sword. Moreover, she had been poisoned to death. Therefore, you had to be carrying those items with you. However, you were empty-handed. He seems to be surprised by my reasoning. I can also see a glimpse of hope in his eyes. That's right. I didn't have anything... It didn't have anything to do with me. Uh, no. That's right. I didn't have anything with me. Nothing at all. No need to repeat it. I got it the first time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't thank me yet. In any case, you still made a major mess out of things. You may not be charged for murder, but you can still be charged with obstruction of justice. What? That's the way it is. Will you stop looking at me like you're some lost puppy? I'm sorry. I should have confessed earlier. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're done here. I get up. I'm just about to leave the room when suddenly Ezra stops me. Hey. Hmm? Thank you. I told you. You don't need to thank me. Yeah, I know. Just please. Please catch the madman who killed Ugune. I smile at Ezra. I will. I turn and leave the room. Oh my god, Kazuki. You were amazing. Huh? Oh. Huh. I have to agree with Akito on this one. You did really well in there. I was worried you wouldn't get what I was trying to do in there, but thankfully, you did. Koya scratches his cheek, looking slightly relieved. It never crossed your mind to tell me your plan before you wheel in in there. <laughs> Sorry. I was improvising as we went along. Jeez. It's hard to believe that some of this carefree can be so good at what he does. Good job, you two. I have written down all the important information, Jericho. It has already been handed over to the team for further investigation. Thank you, Michiko. Please, let us know the results. Certainly. I'll be sure to do that. We should probably head back to headquarters. Besides, I don't think anything else would happen here today. I think it's time we head back to HQ, Akito. Oh yeah, I'm surprised Suzume hasn't called us yet. Oh, the signal here is pretty bad, so you might have trouble receiving calls. Oh, that's just great. Ugh, Suzume's going to kill us! Hmm? Why would you say that? She's too adorable to kill anyone. <clears throat> you obviously haven't met her dark side. Michiko looks at me. I simply shrug back. Well, you know what people say. The couple who fights the most is the one most in love. <laughs> I guess you're right. Huh? What did you say? <laughs> we all turn to look at Koya. Huh? It's always nice to see young folks in love. <laughs> Akito's face turns bright red. L love? It's nothing like that. Akito quickly turns away. His face is probably as red as a chili pepper right now. We all know the truth, Akito. Well, I guess we'll be going now. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a part of the interrogation process. Don't mention it. You were quite impressive in there. I agree. You did a great job on your first interrogation. I am speechless. I didn't expect them to compliment me. What's wrong? Um... Oh, don't mind him. He's just not accustomed to flattery. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> she smiles at me. Sheesh, now I feel stupid. I turn around in a flash and start walking. Let's go, Akito. Thank you for today. No problem. You're welcome. Hey! How annoying. I wonder if the girls were able to find out anything. 
Hey, why didn't you wait for me? We don't have time for this. I start walking towards the exit. Ugh, wait for me, will you? Akio's phone beeps just as we're approaching his car. Hmm? Oh, it must be Suzumi. This caller has been trying to reach you. Ah, oh, great. Four missed calls. What should I tell her? Why are you asking me? Hey, it was your idea to head over to Ezra's apartment in the first place. You started this mess, so you have to fix this. What should I tell her? I shrug. Just think of something. You're kidding me. Why should I be the one to think of something? She's calling again. Ugh. Oh, hey, Suzumi. Hey, hey, calm down. It's not my fault. My phone had no signal. Um, no, we were, uh... Akito looks to me for an answer. Darn it. I take the phone from Akito. Hey, Suzumi, it's me. Kazuki? We happened to bump into Koya earlier, and he invited us over to the police station. We were in the middle of interrogating Ezra Longley, so... Wait, wait, wait. What? First of all, what do you mean you bumped into General Koya? And second, is, is that the same Longley Akito mentioned yesterday? Oh, crap. I forgot about that. What kind of mumbo-jumbo are you trying to tell me here? It's a long story. So here's the short version. Ezra is expected of murdering Ogune. Well, he was. You see, the police checked the phone records of all the calls Ogune made prior to her murder, and they found out that Ezra was the last person she spoke to. That's why they wanted to ask him some questions. Is that so? I'm guessing you knew about this since yesterday? No, we just received a tip. A tip? Really? More or less. Oh, goodness. You're killing me, Kazuki. So, as I was saying, we were in the interrogation room at the police station. It's hard to get a signal there. That's why we didn't get your calls. A General Koya let you guys watch the interrogation? Yeah. Anyway, I'll give you the full details once we arrive back at headquarters. Ugh, alright. Who will be waiting? See you soon. Yep. I give Akito back his phone. If that was me, Suzumi would tear me apart. Now that would be fun to watch. Hey! A dismal thought suddenly hits me as I settle into the car. Oh, crap. What is it? I forgot to take out the laundry. Seriously? That's been on your mind this whole time? Uh, no. I just thought of it, actually. Uh... As we head back to Ingrisil, we both realize that we haven't eaten anything yet, so we decided to stop by the Red Dragon and grab a quick bite to eat. Yo. Hey. Hey, big bro. Hi, Kazuki. Finally! What took you guys so long? We had to eat something. <sighs> Fine. Now tell me everything. From the beginning, and don't leave out any details. Do I have to? I already told you the short version on the phone. Yeah, well, I didn't like the short version. I'm starting to wonder if there's anything you do like. Oh, what did you say? Nothing, just mumbling to myself. I told the girls everything that happened. Almost everything. I exclude the part about how I took the file from Michigo and infiltrated Ezra's apartment with Akito's help. And that's pretty much it. Any other questions? Why did General Koya let you guys watch the interrogation? Don't know. All I did was ask. Hmm. Anyway, sounds like you guys had an amazing time. Yeah, it was crazy. I glance at Suzumi. She appears to be in deep thought. Is she looking for a loophole in my story? Okay, what are you thinking about, Suzumi? Now, let me rephrase that. What did I do wrong? Oh, well, there's two things. First, there's something you're not telling us. And second, it appears the police are one step ahead of us. Hmm. Yeah, it seems that way. Well, they've been working on the case from the start, so of course they'll be ahead. Yes, I know, but that's not what I'm worried about. What is it, then? their lack of resources. We have a limit to what we can do here. Oh, um, in what way are we limited? Jeez, sis, even I know the answer to that. We don't have guns. Sure. Huh? How does guns help with our work? Um, it doesn't. I just felt like mentioning it. Seriously, Akito. What Suzumi is trying to say here is that the police have access to all kinds of things. Mobile phone records, bills, Video monitoring, credit cards, face recognition systems, 
The list goes on! So, real quick going back to the guns. If you didn't know, guns are illegal for the most part in Japan. You can have certain hunting guns, but those are extremely difficult to get. And I really wish I could say I'm under like I'm downplaying how hard it is to get, but it's really tough. The only people who are going to have guns are going to be the police and the self-defense force. The Japanese do not have a military, keep in mind, as part of the World War II treaty. Oh, that's true. They do. Well, at least we have access to their suspect database. It's frustrating. I mean, think of all the cases we could solve if we had access to those resources. I know. Unfortunately, it's not something we can just gain access to. Getting the authority for those things takes forever. Plus, it's not guaranteed that they'll grant us permission. Yeah. Oh, come on, guys. So what if our resources are a bit limited? We're still doing an amazing job despite that. We were the ones who captured the skate robbers, remember? We even stopped the bingo thief. We did all that, even with our limited resources. Yes, but the Phantom cases are on a whole different level. Ugh, all killers have a motive. We just need to find out why and how he commits those crimes. This is what our job is all about, isn't it? He's got a point. I know it's not easy, but we can do it, guys. Yeah, right, bro. You can be so brilliant sometimes. Wait, what? What do you mean, sometimes? <laughs> that was quite a motivating speech you gave us, Akito. Thanks. You're right, Akito. We're already working on this case, so we should just do our best with what we have. Let's show them what we're made of. <laughs> yes, now we're talking. Let's kick some serious ass. That sounds a lot like something Kazuki would say, Suzumi. Suzumi grins at Kaoru. She's hiding something from us. What could it be? Yes! Let's do our best, everyone! That reminds me. How did the hunt for a publicity officer go? Find anything? Oh yeah! You guys were supposed to look for a police officer who's been in the news recently, right? <laughs> yep! And we managed to find something! So I wonder if publicity is actually supposed to be police and got auto-corrected or something? That's awesome! So what did you find? A few possible suspects. Really? Yep. So, who is it? Do you have a list? Yes. Here. Karu hands Akito and I the list. There are four names on it. Nagase Tasai, 28 years old, wounded during a bank robbery. Ichiro Ochida, 31 years old, won the Utena driving contest. Hira Shotaru, 32 years old, rescued a man injured in a car accident. Is this the one I think it is? And the last one is... Akiak Koya, 39 years old, new general of the police department in Udna. Wait, what? Koya is 39 years old? Hey, why aren't we on the list? Very funny, Akito. What? General Koya is on here, so we should be too. He fits the criteria. That's why he's on there. Anyway, I'm sure most of us are more surprised by his age than the fact that he's on the list. Definitely! I can't believe he's 39 years old! Yeah, it's a real shocker. Anyway, the list isn't long, and none of them appear to be suspicious in any way. Yeah, we were thinking of doing some background checks. You know, to see if any of them knew the victims personally. We even thought of looking into where the officers were at the time each murder took place. Those are all great ideas. Got any leads? Sadly, no. They're police officers, therefore we don't have the authority to look up their personal information. Ah, <sighs> figures. This is precisely why we need access to all databases. If we had more resources, we would be able to solve more cases. Indeed. We'd be able to find out who was on duty around the time of each murder. We could then eliminate the ones who were on duty and narrow down the search. Exactly. So what's the plan? Should we talk to General Koya about it? Not yet. Why? Because I said so. Man, as harsh as ever. So, what now? We can't just sit around and wait. Kaoru and I will be taking care of something tomorrow. That sounds suspicious. What about us? What should we do? You guys can go ahead and speak with some of Professor Li Shang's colleagues. See if anyone knew what he was working on, or if they're able to retrieve any data from his personal computer. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll do that. What about me? What? Aren't you going with Aki and Akito? 
I don't think all three of us need to go there. Hmm. All right, I'll let you choose. The Li Shang murder case with Aki and Akito, or the Matsuo Genichi murder case. Unless, of course, you have other cases you want to check out. Hey, why does he get to choose? Because I'm letting him. End of discussion. Man, that's so unfair. Hey! Aki hits him on the head. Ow! Hey, what was that for? What, fake bro? You don't like partnering up with me? I never said that. Yes, you did. Huh? When? A second ago. No, I didn't. Uh, guys? I knew this would happen. Oh, it's been a while since our last quarrel, after all. Yeah, it's also been a while since they last teamed up for a case. Are you sure this is a good idea? Not really, but they're going to have to work together eventually. <laughs> True. Anyway, what will it be, Kazuki? Uh... So, going with them should give them affection points. We're going solo. Alright, everything's settled then. Yes. Looks like it. I look at the clock. I believe it's time for us to go home. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Ishikawa siblings! Aki and Akito look, both turn to look at Kaoru. Continue your argument at home. What? Um... Okay, time to go home, everyone. And thank you for all your hard work today. Yeah. Everyone gets up and heads for the door. So what's your decision, Kazuki? Are you coming with us tomorrow, or what? I just said it a few seconds ago. Um, I wasn't listening to you, so... I think you two will be able to handle this on your own. <laughs> of course we can! We're detectives, after all! They were just arguing a minute ago. It's amazing how quickly they can just forget and forgive. Okay, you all know the drill. Report back here after you're done with your investigations. Roger that, boss. Yes, ma'am. So what's this thing you have to take care of tomorrow? You'll find out tomorrow. Maybe. Right. We'll give you guys an update once we get back. And so we all went our separate ways. Well, most of us anyway. I was too tired to walk home, so Akito ended up giving me a ride. 